pull their weapon, call the police. Yes. And, and there's been and, and, and that's another form of weaponizing the police socially, which I, I, I'm sure I'm sure police do not want to be called to a to a situation where there's just a person that's being nosy, a person that doesn't like certain cultural people, because we've seen it enough on yeah. the film now with with the uh, with the cell phones. With one of these yeah. cameras on it and people now are not playing. They're recording what we have always kind of complained about. Yeah. These people the, and we call them Karens. You know, these are people that will get in your business. They will call the police on you for nothing. You haven't done anything. They'll call the police to go just to come check you out. I, I mean, I moved in the neighborhood that I live in now, man. When I moved here, probably about, it's been about, what is it, uh, Probably about 17, 18 years now. Mm -hmm. When I first moved here, I was more or less less the minority, you know, a black man moving in this area. And don't you know, man, but when I was before I purchased the house, I went there with the realtor and everything, and the neighbors, man, three, four of them called the police. Oh, like, goodness. I'm like, and, and here's now, now here's the thing about it, man. This is why this anti Karen thing, it has, I, I think it has some legs to it. And I, I support it to a degree because when the police came out on the scene, yeah, they kind of laughed about it, but they still had to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Because they called. I'm like, well, man, I haven't. I mean, I haven't even moved in the house yet. I'm trying to move my stuff in the house from one house to another. Yeah, so, uh, you know, showed them everything that that you know, I'm I'm legitimate. This is my property. It didn't stop them from calling the police every now and then, brother, and 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 and, and for nothing. It was yeah. not one time, not one time, that. When and, and, and this was like like I said about eighteen years ago, it's different now because once they found out what kind of man I am, I'm not going to just allow anyone to run over me. Yes, and in, in particularly when I haven't done anything. Yeah, I, I found it kind of um, it was insulting, and what it yes. did at that time, and then we get to what you said, it made me not talk to my neighbors. Yeah, and 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 that's the that's the part about these type of people sometimes. Who are Karens? We know what Karen is, a person getting your face. Get, I mean, in, in particularly when they're wrong, they don't never want to be wrong. If they're wrong, they fall out crying. They roll over, they fall out, you know, even when they've done something wrong. They don't yeah. have a problem with telling law enforcement they did it wrong, but I was scared. I was like, you know, they fall apart in front of and, and they look for sympathy. Even yes. if they were wrong, right? So it seemed when when I saw that uh that that the rancher, Mr. Marshall, was saying that you know, this this is what they're going through is Karenism. I guess that's the form that, that's the word to call it. it right. Karenism being you know men and women can can do this. Yes, they 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 are not happy or they are suspicious without reason of black people. And I, I gotta, mm -hmm. you know, there's some. I mean, I'm from the south, brother. I've seen it so many times. Oh, I know you probably have. You know, being out there in the south, yeah, man. Know. And I've seen it where people will call the police on you for nothing. Your neighbors and that. And here's the thing about the neighbors doing that to one another, as opposed to really saying, okay, well, let's, you know, I just want to let's 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 meet the people. And let's see. Uh, once you become friends with somebody, you, you open up about things, and you can say, okay, I understand why. He has a that's my neighbor. He he he's African American, but I understand why he has a Black Lives Matter sign, although I may not agree with it, but I can understand why he does based on our communications as neighbors. Mm -hmm. If you're calling the police on me every five minutes, if you if you you know you you get an erroneous charges put on me, then it's not so you know, it's not too common that I'm gonna be neighborly to you. And I shouldn't. I mean, so that's where I think this situation is. So now you, Absolutely. Have, you have angry people. And when I yes. say when you're angry, nobody thinks straight uh, when you're angry. That's why I like me and you talk all the time. Like I'm not interested in winning arguments with angry people. I'm more right. interested in getting resolution to what we're trying to deal with, you know. And so it sounds like they're crying out, in particular his wife, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Because when something like this has been done to you, man. And I, it's been done to me. Not to that, you know, that great level, 
But at some level, it's been done to me, and I can guarantee you that it's been done to many black men and women. Not mm -hmm. only black them, nor minority, whatever, but it, it's been done to many of us. That's why I have a little uh, 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 empathy about that particular family, because they can make your life teetotal hell, man. And, and, and that's a town where they're from. And yeah, it's sort of thinking like that, man. There's no way you win that battle. What you think about it? Yeah, my my brother in law actually told me um, they were looking at buying a house. It was like my mother in law, my sister in law, my brother in law. So my wife's sister and her husband, and then my mother in law. They were all um, at a place uh, housing area they were looking at, and they were like, "Oh yeah, we've got all these houses and property and you know things of that nature and all that." And so they're talking and then my my brother-in-law comes in because he came in last and then they're like, oh, we just sold that house. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but I just yeah. called on the phone and you guys said you had it. Well, OK, fine. Something happened. What about this house? What about that house? What? Are, oh, no, no, we can't. We can't. No, this 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 is just not the place for the houses and it, it, which is code word for we we just don't want you here. You know, it's real estate discrimination. That's all it is. Yeah. And, and that's absolutely ridiculous. Right, um, right. And, and, and I don't understand it to this part because if they talk to you on the phone and they tell you that they have this available and they have that available and they got this and their, their name is this and you go to that person, to that place. And now all of a sudden they got 20 new houses and not one is for sale not when one. you get yeah. there. Yeah. That yeah. makes no sense. You guys got caught. So why continue on with the lie? You know, why continue on with the lie of saying that you don't have any houses when I'm standing there looking right at the lie? And it's like, no, that house is definitely available. If I go ask this guy that lives across the street, is this house available? He'll go, yeah, nobody lives there. There's a for sale sign in the yard. Right. Right. Okay. So. You know, that's that's the problem. And and that's out here in Colorado because my brother in law and sister in law live out in Colorado. So it's I think it was out here in Colorado where they had that uh, experience. Right. Right. You know, so it's 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 a lot like that, um, you know, in, in places and how people choose to act, even back home where I'm from in California, in Southern California. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot of that as well, you know, because people think like because <laughs> we have a blending pot of people in Southern California that we don't really have uh, prejudice issues, right? Right. Well, that's not true because I'm from there. You know, I've lived there my entire life. I've only lived in Colorado for five years. Other than that, I've lived in California. Right. You know, right. I'm coming up on 40, so I've been there a long time. Um, right. Right. And, right. you know, I can tell you that um, you'll encounter those things. Yeah. You know, you will encounter because I'll tell you this, and this is just just a little bit off topic, but it explains the area. OK, so I um, moved from L.A. County area because my dad was in a drive by as a school teacher. So shot at the kids, shot at him and he retired. So we ended up leaving Cerritos, Inglewood area of California um, to come to the high desert of Southern California, which is where Victorville, Apple Valley, Hesperia. Uh, you go a little bit more north, Barstow, um, go a little bit this way. You end up at Phelan and Pinion Hills and, and places like that. Um, and there's a few little small areas in between there as well. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because one of the things that I found out, I didn't see it as much in Los Angeles because see Los Angeles. Every precious people exist everywhere, but in Los Angeles, particularly it's different. Like you don't, it's not out in your face. Like people are less likely to do things like that. You right, know, right, they're right. doing their own thing. It's a big city, you know, a lot of things going on. People are less likely. So when I lived, I went to a private Christian school as a little kid there, you know, I didn't see any, that's, that's what I'm getting to. I didn't see any stuff like that. Right. I didn't start seeing stuff like that till I got to the high desert. Okay. So when I came to the high desert, the grand wizard, or dragon, I can't remember, but he was the main guy that ran the clan in in Southern California 
who later on, I believe he moved to San Diego, but he lived in Fontana and Fontana is only maybe about 15, 18 minutes from Victorville. Okay. So we moved to a place where the, 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 <laughs> the grand of the clan is sitting 18 minutes technically from you. Okay. And yeah. then the other problem was the neo-Nazi movement. They had meetings every Friday up in the hills of Apple Valley. Right. Well, and this is, this is without fail. Like every Friday, this was, was this was happening. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. You could drive out there right now on a Friday and I guarantee you, you're going to see it. I don't think that it stopped unless something happened. The last time I was out there, it's been a while, but it was something I knew as a kid. And when I became an adult, I went up there for a party and our party was here. Their party was there. We didn't know. And mm -hmm. I'm talking, we walked up to the gates I walked in and you saw a swastika flag and all these guys and the whole thing going on. So I got to see it at first hand. And right. when they were done with their parties, if you were a kid riding your bike, because I had a, some friends that lived up there as a kid and I rode my bike and you would see swastikas cut into the sand and, mm -hmm. you know, flyers on the ground and, and stuff like that. So it was a very real thing. So what I'm pointing at is you had to be careful where you went and where you were going because these guys, I mean, they recruited, they tried to recruit at my high school for their little neo-Nazi movement. Mm -hmm. You know, they came to my high school trying to recruit with flyers and stuff like that. It didn't go very well, but right. they came. And right. that's the kind of climate you're in is that element was very much alive in those places so when you were out you had to be careful on where you were going and who you were around and if i may say there was also uh guys that were being set up on dates so they were like neo-nazi girls right right and right Nazi guys would want to rob people do home invasions rob people whatever um so they would have these girls go out on dates with minority guys or just guys in general. Right. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere in the date, they would be followed by their little group and wherever they ended up going a hotel room, wherever a guy's house, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and they would go in and they would invade the house or the hotel room, rob the guy, do whatever. And, and this was something that was very widely known. So not only that, you had to be careful on who you were dating mm. because you didn't know if she was tied into these the, guys. Right. And I had actually known some girls in high school that were kind of tied into that, you know, that, that realm. And right. I had a crush on, on, on the girl in high school. 